welcome, welcome, welcome to Health Issues. I'm your host, Chris Sylvain, and believe me, this is something new for us and really uh, totally exciting. Both of these gentlemen have been on the show before individually, but now we have t literally two, uh, uh, I, I can't think of a better team uh, when we're looking at New Orleans and really all the way around. Crime in the city. We have Dr. Peter Schaff, Tulane University, and I think everybody knows him. He's been on television over and over again and done so much research and study. And Dr. John Penny from Southern University in New Orleans, uh, also extremely distinguished, and everybody knows him on television and around uh, the newspaper and the news medias. They go to these two gentlemen regularly to ask about uh, crime, and, uh, and that we have a lot of. I would agree. So thank you, gentlemen. We appreciate Pleasure having you. Pleasure being here. That's great, great. Well, let's you, you hate to be of interest because of that problem, but it's true. <laughs> yeah. This is the city for it. I mean, we, um, uh, my daughter was talking. She went away to school to Atlanta in, uh, last night, and uh, she's only been away a good year and a half, you know, barely 20 years old. And she was looking back on the city, and she was saying, you guys in New Orleans, it's so horrible there. And I'm like, as if you've gone so far, you know. But the, have we gotten used to the crime? And I guess the big question is, let's start right at it. Sure. How do we move out of it? I think that uh, it's, it's really a kind of uh, a question of whether we've gotten used to it. We've come to expect that things are going to happen, and, and for some strange reason we... Uh, we go about our business as usual because we know that's the way things are going to happen. We, and, and so I, I don't think people are really expecting major changes at, and they've become kind of cynical and insensitive to the, the problems that we have in the city. Um, yeah, well, one, you have the dip, the great dip, you know, in, in 2014. The murder indices are temporarily down. The question, is this a hiatus because of the cold weather, a bunch of factors, the shootings are picking up. And this other, the troubling number that everybody's wondering about is the differential between the aggravated assaults, the shootings, and the killings. Is that a medical mystery? I mean, you know, better medical care. Are they missing for some reason or hitting legs instead of hearts? Uh, you know, so the question is, where are the, this crime problem going? But I, I think where John and I really would agree, and he's been doing this mm -hmm. incredible work at uh, SUNO with the uh, commission, Louisiana Commission, is you may have an intractable core that, you know, it's like people get some of the cancer, but this cancer is still left there. And even though the murder indices are temporarily down or maybe longer term, you know, there are these group of folks who are recycled between mental health care, drug care, and prison, jails and prisons at enormous cost to themselves and their families and society. And, you know, we, we are, you know, we have 42,000 people in prison, which is unbelievable. You know, many of them in contract parish jails. You know, and how do we dig out of them? You know, John and I are both focused on, both in our research and uh, public advocacy, is how do we get at that core? And, and, and one of the things that we find, um, given the, the, the depth, width, and breadth of, of, of the plight that we're in, stuck in right now, as far as the, the large number of incarceration, the large number of jails that we have, uh, and the amount of money that we, it takes to maintain those, those places, those institutions, um, it, it's, it's mind-boggling as to how do we de-invest into institutionalization and take the money, the savings from that, and invest it into things that would be much more uh, beneficial to the community as well as to the family structure in this, in this city and in this state. One of the things that we know <clears throat> that Louisiana happened to be one of the uh, poorest states in the nation, not because we don't have the resources. It, we're poor because of the way that we have, uh, we don't, have not ex explored the possibility of what we do with the resources that we have, and the way that we've spent 
money in the past has not really helped us a lot. And uh, we've spent a lot of money on the front end on jails and less money on pupils and students. So that, that becomes a, a critical issue for us. Yeah, and you, you know, it's a health show, and you know, I'm, I'm a school of public health, and both of our interests there. You know, but the other thing is, we're, we're, we're investing stupid, and we invest back in. We wait for people to mess up, and then we give them 10 year sentences at more hundreds of thousands of dollars instead of trying to intervene to prevent that adverse outcome. You know, it's like, uh, you know, 30 years ago, you sort of wait for somebody to get colon cancer, and now you, you know, do a colonoscopy and clip, right. clip, snip, <laughs> snip, it's over. You know, and we got to think like that, you know, uh, and, and the, the, the costs go way down if you think like that. Right now, you, do you want to clothe, house, guard, you know, uh, all around, entertain? Uh, Forty-two thousand people. It's a small city. It's bigger than Kenner, you know. You know, every day of the year, you know, yeah. and that is just stupid. And we we've got to get a, a policy that's statewide that assumes like, this kind of rational public health approach that I think both of us advocate. And and that's very interesting that uh, that Peter um, has has talked about it, and the fact that he said it in, in the heart of. Um, public health, and he's seen this as a, for what it is, is a public health issue, that if we don't look at how people are, um, even, even the way that they're treated medically, the, the absence of appropriate treatment at natal care, and, and, and then focusing on some of the neurological consequences of, uh, of domestic violence and, and other things that are happening within those homes, then we, we're going to continue down the same road to, to a point of destruction. And so our hope yeah, is that we will, we will somehow get smart enough to invest our money and our time in a way that makes a difference in the city and bring back the idea that people would want to come to the city and invest in this. And they will invest in the city if, by chance, we have, um, have great public health, we have great educational system, and the economy is flowing, and that will attract people in who will then invest in our school systems, and, and uh, so we have to get those things flowing. All right, and throw this out. Mm, sure. Okay. Um, <clears throat> great comment. Here it comes. <laughs> no, it's a great, wonderful comment. No, yeah, very, very, very much so. I mean, uh, I think that uh, the flow is beautiful, and that's what we were expecting. Sure, sure. But let's, you know, obviously let's play devil's advocate on the flip sure, side, sure. Um, where people are saying, "Hey, we're about tired of spending money. You know, we've spent so much money on schools sure. and haven't raised the ACT scores anywhere. They're, they're flatline." In fact, they're, zip, they're, they're dipping. I, I think you know. Yeah. I don't. I think the, the amount of money that went to charter schools or whatever, but um, uh, uh, it's debatable whether they're reaching the Massive. core, that particular core, that that uh, propensity for crime or whatever. Um, healthcare, uh, that's a challenge. Yeah. How much? I mean, antibiotics can we give? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. at, at what point um, are we dealing with that? And so. Is the community itself? I'm talking about black, white, or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, watching political. Is the community itself saying, uh, throwing up its hand, saying we've spent, we can't keep spending money on education and not getting the ACT scores up, critical thinking skills up. In other words, the teachers are saying, uh, it's not a whole lot I can I can do with these children. You know what I mean? Uh, the the, the yeah, doctors are saying I can tell them mm -hmm. to do this and this and that and the other, and nothing's. Happened. You know, uh, I was on, um, you know, the, sh sh the other side on, on you know, conservative talk radio, yeah, which sure. is bizarre okay, because sure. I'm a liberal, yeah. you know, but, you know, the whole thing of the common core, and I agree with the governor, the choice is, are we going to be a, ba a banana republic for the rest of eternity, All right. or are we going to move to a knowledge economy? And that's what John yeah. was saying, you know, that, um, you know, to, to have quality education, the other thing is, you know, uh, people have been here a while. Remember when the school board uh, used to be known as the bank? 
you know, you know, we had five. I went to a party where there were five school board members under indictment. Yeah. You know, it's like why why couldn't Medford and Saint Pierre solve crime with the cameras because they <laughs> stole the money. You know, and and you know we gotta you gotta realize that we we've a lot done this to ourselves. It isn't like somebody came and got us. But there there are breakthroughs in science that echo what John's saying. Like uh, this whole movement of. Uh, a traumatic traumatization from violence, the second wave violence. If you hear gunshots every night and you go into your your bed. mom's bed because of fear and you see the uh, other, your friend shot with trauma pants and all that, there's a, um, a, tra a traumatic contamination that occurs as great research. And again, are you, do you want to wait for a bizarre murder? Uh, to occur, or do you want to intervene before that traumatic shock sets in? And you know, they're, they're, and the research now is fascinating. You can change your brain, and they won't be able to learn because of exposure in domestic violence, and violence in the streets. So this is a cycle we've gotten ourselves into, and um, education's a part, but other interventions are critical as well. Yeah, and when you when you talk about that, it's it's ironic that, and and I'm sure it's going on in other places, but in in the city of New Orleans, you've had a, a history of children living in quarters, in places where the lead po uh, poison to the brain has been uh, uh, so detrimental that they go to school and they can't learn. They are, uh, and so. The response to that has been that when when Hurricane Katrina came, so how we solved that was that we we tore down the housing projects and we began to build new quarters, and most of those people who once lived there no longer live there, but the damage has already been done, and so how I mean I I think from a uh, from a Classical to a positivist criminal justice perspective, we have to look at not only what's going on with the the crime and justice part. I mean, we talk about the cause and effect, uh, and the reason why we can't get out of it is because we have to bear some responsibility for what we have not done in the past, and and perhaps. It is that kind of guilt that is keeping us from doing, getting where we need to go. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's good. I mean, it, it's good. Let's bring it in for this country has had a, uh, the most heterogeneous country in the world. Mm -hmm. Obviously, mm -hmm. where you know we're we are the melting pot uh, more than any country in the world. But um, this country's history. And it's African American males that mm -hmm. make up the bulk sure, sure. of uh, who's incarcerated. Sure. Now, whether that's the ones who's sure. doing the crime, that's a different story. Sure. But the incarceration rate um, uh, definitely says that. Um, but this country has not had a good history, and that's on the flip side. On mm -hmm. one side, they're saying, "Hey, not keep spending sure. money," mm -hmm. but on the other side, this country's history has been pretty flatlined. Death from uh, what's that? 1492. Uh, 1776 to 2013, as far as to relate the power relationship, sure. um, where we've had abolitionists in 1850 mm -hmm. and we have abolitionists in 19, <laughs> I mean 2014. We've, you know, we've we've had those who have said there's nothing you can do with them, but you know, like the movie that that was a, a horrendous movie, whatever it was, 12 Years a Slave. I mean, yeah. this was I watched uh, it. it is, Shutter to watch, but where the, the history hadn't changed. We've had abolitionists, we've had those who sat in the middle, and we have those who worked. We had um, those uh, uh, that we, we call it the, the house and field, uh, call it African Americans to yeah, be more politically sure. correct sure. these days. Yeah, you but know, so, um, but the status quo, we're flatlining. Is there anything, obviously, something major has to happen? Well, uh, and, I, and I think that, that the issue, some of the issues underlying that fact is that uh, what is it, I mean, the, the, the masses of people are going to have to decide what is important to them in terms of whether having that amount of invested power 
uh, and having the problems that that cause whether they're willing to divest themselves of some power and include have more inclusive look at how we respond to the problems in this country. So, so the question becomes: Do we want to give up just a little so everybody can have some? And and I'm not talking about handing out money to anybody, but I'm talking about including everybody in their having a stake in their own or say so in how they want to be served and how they want to be treated. The, uh, I gave my midterm. You love this, John. And uh, the kids, I haven't graded it yet. It's going to be an interesting week. And I'll I have to come to my house and help me grade them. Uh, but I gave an article by Walter E. Williams, who's a conservative African-American sure. economist. Right. And, um, and, and the question was, how would Oliver Thomas, who believes in the institutional racism uh, causes of crime. How do you react to this article? And this article says, basically, stop blaming people, yeah. change your own culture. You know, you, you know this rap music, you have infatuation with the doper life, you have gangsters or culture heroes, culture icons, right? And uh, you have, you know, dads that run away from any kind of active parenting. So what, what William says in this article, I'll see what my students say, or what your audience says, is that you can do a lot of things without directly dealing with the power structure issue. And that's important. I don't want to yeah, minimize sure, it. Sure. But there are a lot of things either communities can do or cities can do or uh, countries or states can do. You know, uh, another conservative, and that's not my sure. thing, but <laughs> J.Q. Wilson says, by the time you fix housing, equalize power, you know, change the world, you go broke. The well, entire budget, discretionary budget of the Justice Department uh, is about fifty million dollars. I mean, that's it. You know, the uh, to do programs. You know, it's a million per state. We're doing better than that than most places. But you know, this thing in two thousand when Clinton was in power, that they had about four billion dollars going to the <laughs> cops and Bureau of Justice assistance. So you know, yeah. right now. You know what can you do with the margins? You know you're not going to get you're not going to be able to change the world, and you know but what can you do to make a dent in this? And that's I think what John's yeah. Uh, yeah. recent commission uh, conference, yeah. the LA Commission, yeah. I think really tried to deal with. Sort of, what's your, what's your focal point? What's your entry point in this problem? Well, and and, and I think it, it's funny in in dealing with the commission and talking about some of the issues that we're going to. Ha have to look at and we there are some things that we can do and then I, I think one is that when you talk about uh, this the situation of uh, an ex-offender coming out of uh, incarceration and the first thing you do is when he fills out an application they they have a box on there that says have you been incarcerated